these two things each are shorthand for two different things, right? Um, so in other words, they're shorthand for four things. So you just want to think about when does each one change and uh, then we'll deal with it as we go. So for example, this guy here, sometimes he's at plus two. Other times he's minus x minus two. When does he switch over? At x equals negative two, he switches, right? Or in other words, when the thing inside the brackets is zero, that's when he changes over, okay? When does this guy change? When that equals negative three over two. Do you see where we got that value from? In other words, it's when two x plus three equals zero. That's the switchover point. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about a Cartesian plane. I'm going to think about where where is negative two? Negative two. Let's put that guy. One, two. Let's put that guy over there. Right. And then negative three on two. That's going to be here. Are you okay with that? Did you make this question? Or did someone else make this question? I just, you just made it up? Yeah. Last night when I was thinking I'm going to change the numbers slightly because you've just given... Because you see how these are so close yeah. together? So it will be <laughs> will not be that interesting. It will be a, it will be a silly looking graph. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a minus. How will that change things? Okay, good. So this will not be minus three on two. This will be three on two because that is when... 2x minus 3 is 0. This will give something a little more interesting to count. Okay, so let's forget about that guy for a minute. This is what happens, by the way. We do this all the time. It's like, I made up a question. Oh, this question's terrible. Okay, so let's, let's try this again. So if that's 1 and that's 2, there's 3 on 2. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, so in other words, to the left of negative 2, something is happening. Between these, something else is happening. And then to the right of 3 on 2, some final third thing is happening. So let's look at each case. When x is less than negative 2, y is going to be equal to, have a look at the absolute value pieces. What's this guy going to be equal to when x is on the left? Like the negative branch. Yeah, it'll be the negative version of itself, right? So that will be minus x minus 2. Are you okay with that? In the same way, when you look at the second absolute value, what will it be equal to? Over here. Negative yeah, well, you see, he's, he's going to be the negative branch, this whole area over here, to the left of one and a half, right? This is clearly to the left of one and a half, right? So therefore, I'll say the negative branch again, minus 2x plus 3. You okay with that? I'm going to just simplify. What do I get? How many x? What am I collecting my terms for x? Uh, minus 3x. 3x. And plus 1. one. Cool. So to the left of negative 2, this is what I'm going to draw. Um, when x is negative 2, the value that this takes on is going to be uh, minus 3 times minus 2 is 6 plus 1, which is 7. So let's just call that. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's a coordinate that I pass through. Okay. It's minus 3x plus 1. So where does the rest of the line go? Down. No, it, does, it does go down, but I'm actually only drawing to the left of this, right? Like, if I were to keep on going to the right, it should go down until it intersects with plus 1. Do you agree? Because that's in mx plus b form. But I, I actually don't want to go in that direction. I want to go in the opposite direction. So it looks to me like something like that. Is that okay? This is y equals minus 3x plus 1. And it only exists to the left of negative 2. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay. Now, we also determined once you pass over negative 2, something changes up until 3 on 2. I'm only going to look at this area because once I go past there, something else changes and it's different again. Okay. So now I'm going to say when I'm between negative 2 and 3 on 2, y equals. Okay. I've passed this switchover point. Right? So this guy, what does it become? X plus two. Just regular x plus 2. What about this? It's still negative. It's still on the negative branch because I'm still to the left of its changeover point. They each have their own changeover point, right? So I still get the negative version. Okay? Tell me what to get. Uh, negative x 
plus 5. Excellent. Okay. Now, interestingly, but predictably, if I put in y equals negative 2 into this, what do you get? It's going to get positive. You're going to get minus negative 2, which is 2 plus 5. 2 plus 5, of course, is? Which you've already got. You knew that, didn't you? Look, I already know I'm going through 7. Okay? So I don't need to get this point again. What I want is, what happens when I end, right? So when x is 3 on 2, what's going to happen? This is going to become, uh, I'm actually going to try this number because it's a bit, my brain can't deal with something this complicated. Uh, minus 3 on 2 plus 5, right? What's that? Like seven I think that's two. 3 and a half, isn't it? Yeah. 7 on 2. Yeah, because that's minus one and a half, that's five, you can crush that. So where's that going to be? Okay, I said that's seven, uh, that makes that one, two, three. So here's three and a half, and there's three on two. Okay, so now let's just join those dots, because it's a straight line, isn't it? So it's going to look like, oops, I missed. <laughs> you get the idea, let's just make that a fatter dot to do it. <laughs> okay, now, before I move on, do you notice this is exactly what you ought to expect? Look, there's 5, there's the intercept, right? See how this is super steep? This is not so steep, why not? The gradient is not negative 3, the gradient is negative 1, which I'm going to label on there. Okay, last part, let's have a look. When x is what? To the right. A 3 on 2, greater than 3 on 2, okay? This first guy, he's already switched over to the positive version, right? He's not going to change again. That's cool. What about this guy? At last, he becomes the, oops, sorry. At last, he becomes the positive version of himself, like so. So collect some like terms for me. Uh, three that's 3x three and then negative 1. Which shouldn't surprise you, because look, remember this case? This was both the negative ones, and you end up with minus 3x plus 1. This is both the positive cases, so you get exactly the opposite, right? 3x minus 1. Uh, what's that going to look like? It's well, down. it's just going to go is it up. up. Oh, oh, sorry, up. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, because I was thinking the other way. Okay, you see these guys have to be exactly opposite to each other, because it's like both negatives, both positives, so therefore, they're exact opposites. How do you find the the three um, the seven on two? Which seven on two? Like the seven this one? Yeah. Yeah. So I just tested a value. I just wanted to know, like this line in the middle here, it's going to go and do something like this. But I want to know exactly where it goes because I've got to draw the darn thing, right? I've got to say there's three and a half, just like I had to say there's seven, right? I can't just draw my lines anywhere. Yeah, I need some you, points. How do you just get that? Because you have, to, you have to find the coordinates. So when you so when you have you have to substitute that three over two into the back into the equation to find that y coordinate. Oh. To so find the range where it's you know. Yeah, that's right. So for example, if I wanted, I could find any point on this line. I could have found what's the point where x equals one, or x equals zero, or x equals negative one. Those are all fine. They're not as useful to me though, because I need to keep going all the way to three on two. I might as well just find out where it ends. If I know the start and know the end. I can draw the line, and every other point is in the middle, so I don't need to find any of those coordinates, okay? So I looked for when x equals 3 on 2. Why did I choose that? Because that's the ending. Because that's the end of my domain, oh. right? That's, that's the end, and now I switch over to something else. So if I find that point, that will be the most useful for me. That would be where it, the intercept is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, just if I, if I rewound, right? If I went back to the beginning, Okay, and I'm like, oh, I'll change over at 2, and I'll change over at, uh, sorry, negative 2, and I'll change over at 3 on 2. Okay? I could find any coordinates I like. I could find out, oh, what about x equals negative 3? I'm just curious, what's happening there? And then you get a coordinate. And then you can say, oh, what about x equals 0? I'll get another coordinate. And then what about x equals 10? I'll get another coordinate. Okay? But I, this is not enough information to draw the graph, because these points are not the switchover points where things change. Right? So it's like, why would you pick those points? Pick the points that are important to the graph, and they will give you the best picture.
So for for the for the the, the one the part where it dominates in between yep. two changing points, yep. you always have to find the coordinates basically starting. Yeah, there. more or less. I mean, like I said, you can find other coordinates, but They're they are not as useful as the changeover ones. Now, let me follow up with this because we just made up this question. Um, if you've got this in an extension exam, then a common follow-up would be, hence, yeah. part B, hence solve uh, x plus 2 plus 2x minus 3 uh, is greater than or equal to 6. That is a classic question to follow up this question. Right? So they'd ask you that after graphing this one. Right? Correct. So they're clearly trying to lean you in to say, well, you just graph. Yeah. You just spent 10 minutes making the graph. So I'm going to look at where 6 is, just like we did with the very first question this morning. Here is 6. So I want the parts that are above. Right? I'm clearly going to want um, this part over here. That part's good. And I want this part over here. That part is good. So in order to find where those parts are, I need this value and this value. And you see why, you know, we don't just say, hey, label the equations on your graphs because it'll make your graph look more awesome. No, we do that because now that I know the equations, do you see, I don't need to solve when this guy is equal to six. It's irrelevant. This guy never intersects with six in the domain that it exists. I need to solve when this is equal to six, minus x plus five equals six, minus x equals, 1, x equals as you expected, right? And then you solve this guy, 3x minus 1 equals 6. Uh, so that's 7 over, seven over 3. Which, uh, 7 over 3 is 2 and a third, which is, uh, yeah, not bad, okay? Right? So I, uh, just, just look at it like that, okay? So you can see now, if I've got this value, this is true for x is on which side of negative 1? Less. Right? Or x is greater than or equal to? 7 over 3. Yeah, it's always equal to as well. You, you match whatever the... If this includes boundaries, you include yeah, boundaries. Yeah. If this doesn't include boundaries, then you don't include boundaries. Okay? 